What's up, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more Duran Duran. We're going back to their 1988 album, Big Thing, again. Um, I'm very interested to hear this album because, as I said, the more I listen to Duran and the more I start to, you know, get closer to completing reactions to some of these albums, I'm beginning to think about the history of their discography, the sort of temporal progression, the stylistic progression and exploration. So um, I'm beginning to think about this as a follow-up to Notorious and an uh, preceding release uh, before, what is it, Liberty? Is that right? I think, is it Liberty that comes after this? So, um, yeah, let me know if I'm getting that wrong. But like I said, I'm just beginning to think about their work in time, if you will. So, uh, yeah, I do, or I have heard a couple people comment that the All She Wants Is version on this studio album is not fundamentally different from the 45 remix, which I think I already uh, reacted to, courtesy of Izzy World. Shout out to Izzy. Uh, but as a result, I'm going to skip over it for now. Now, if some reason um, I'm getting that wrong, and it is actually quite different from the version that I already reacted to, do let me know, because um, I'll just go back and redo it. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think the version I already reacted to is more or less the same as this. Uh, that's what a couple people have said. So we're jumping ahead to Too Late Marlene. Um, now, obviously, uh, too late would suggest that the opportunity, the window for something to take place or uh, perpetuate to continue has passed, and so now that opportunity has uh, been removed, whether by the nature of the situation or whether an offer has been taken off of the table, so to speak. Um, but, you know, Marlene, not quite sure what to make of that. Um, I am sort of like now a little bit worried when I react to a tune with the proper name in it. I just did a rea uh, erasure reaction, it was called Joan. And I was like, oh, you know, it could be anyone's name, it obviously relates to a female, but, you know, the way that, you know, it's like I wasn't thinking Joan of Arc, which, make, in retrospect, I felt really dumb. It was like, wait, like, why did I not consider that? Um, especially because there were a couple lines about, like, absolute belief and so on. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm it's like, is there a famous Marlene that I'm blanking on? So, um, yeah, we'll have to see how the name comes into it. Not sure what to make of that, but the phrase too late is um, interesting to my brain in the sense that it suggests you know, there was a window for something to happen and it doesn't exist anymore and perhaps we're going to hear what the consequences are or at least why that opportunity was missed. Um, so once again, that could have nothing to do with the song. I do keep talking about it when I do these sort of pre-reaction uh, speculations about tunes that I haven't heard before just based on the name. Um, it's just a way to sort of start thinking about words and phrases and, and themes, but um, it might have nothing to do with it whatsoever. So anyway, let's get to it. This is Too Late Marlene by Duran Duran on their 1988 album, Big Thing. Interesting. I like this a lot. It has like a night, nighttime jazz sort of feel to it. Like it's like, it was sort of like echoed in the middle of the tune, it was like in the shrine in the middle of the tune. It's a smooth tune, it's got elegance. Alright, so the the opportunity that has passed is the ability to change, the ability to perhaps alter one's behavior into more desirable ways. Contrasting heat and moonlight, which is sort of like a cool visual image. A cul-de-sac. Sounds 
sing it. to Mr. Rhodes again. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That, that was awesome. Like, as I said, when it started, I had a kind of like smooth, kind of like nighttime jazz court sort of feel. And then I got sort of like, you know, caught up in the lyrical themes and I, you know, kind of forgot that, well, you know, in jazz, occasionally saxophones show up. And not that that was necessarily a jazz tune. I do think it was sort of a synth pop tune. Um, but I do think there were sprinklings, uh, uh, flavorings, um, of a bit of a jazz style and you know I had sort of forgotten about that when I started trying to pursue the lyrics as much as I could catch them uh, and then when that sax came in it was just like you know aural gold on my ears so um, yeah really enjoyed that uh, it's interesting because I don't really know um, I've heard a number of people talk about this album I've heard a couple people talk about it in terms of like it was the most experimental you know that they had gotten up until that point it was the most like genre bending and so on um, so yeah I'm I'm really not sure what to expect as I go through this album um, even though I've now heard a few tunes um, but yeah if there's more like that I'm very excited speaking of being very excited I do have to mention the next tune is one that a couple different people have mentioned uh, and that's drug and then parenthetically it's just a state of mind which is a fascinating title I won't spend too much time talking about it here uh, we'll we'll sort of speculate on the uh, potential themes when we actually do the reaction, but yeah, uh, as I said, a couple people have mentioned this one, so I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, more than half of the album remains, so uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's another tune beside the nec uh, next one that you're very much looking forward to. I do know Palomino. A few people have mentioned Palomino, and that's not too far behind. That's the seventh tune, so we're, uh, we're moving our way through several albums. Uh, and like I said, let me know what you think of that tune and this album. Other than that, thank you for listening and watching. I'll see you next time.